Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Tonight on Q2, it's time for a Friday night flick. If you haven't been out here in a while, you ought to come and try it. We have cleaned it up. A popular Billings attraction is back in the big screen business. Plus, a small town receives a big award. But what an honor just to be listed with those folks. Red Lodge is now the 2022 tourism destination of the year. But first, parts of the Q2 viewing area could once again be looking like a winter wonderland this weekend with a blizzard warning now in effect. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. April showers are on the way, and we're not just talking about much needed rain. Snow and blizzard conditions could be in store for parts of eastern Montana. We want to get straight to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh tonight for the latest on what we can expect. Ed? Here's a look out towards Bozeman Pass, and this is actually looking better than it did just a short time ago with visibility a little better, but you'll notice the snow isn't sticking to the roadway quite yet, and we're seeing quite a bit of that. Same thing around Red Lodge. We grabbed this video a couple of minutes ago. You can see the snow starting to stick in the grass, but wet roadways, uh, at least for now. We will start to see some colder air start to push in, but the rain has been a little heavier here around Laurel up towards Billings. We've seen that really start to build in even since around earlier this afternoon. Notice the eastern plains a little bit quieter, but that's the area that will really start to fill in. With the Stockman Bank weather cam, wet roads around town, use some care this afternoon and this evening. We'll talk more about the weekend forecast coming up in a few minutes. Red Lodge may also see some snow this weekend. Nothing to get too excited about, but here's one thing that is kind of exciting. Red Lodge was just named the Montana Tourism Destination of the Year. Our Matthew Hidalgo headed up to the mountains for the story. Earlier in the day, standing on Red Lodge Mountain, it still looks like winter out here with another typical spring storm in the air. A spring storm is moving in, but Red Lodge is getting excited for the next season of tourism. It's a sign of the seasons, an annual event in Montana that signals summer is on its way. This week, Montana Department of Transportation crews began plowing the Beartooth Highway, even though another winter storm is moving in. We're going to move on and enjoy what we have here, the great outdoors. And Red Lodge truly has become a year-round destination from ski slopes in the winter to downtown dining and shopping in the summer. In fact, the town this week was awarded the Tourism Destination of the Year Award at the 2022 Governor's Conference. It means everything to me because we have been working so hard. And excitement is high as 2022 projections are already rising. Record crowds also expected in gateway communities around Yellowstone Park this year as the park celebrates its 150th anniversary. We feel like we're ready for a great summer. Reservations are up. Um, I do the rodeo tickets here and we're way ahead of past years in sales. We're absolutely thrilled about all the celebrations that have been, will go on with this uh, 150 year celebration of Yellowstone National Park. To be included and have people come and drive through our town to go up and enjoy the park, it's gonna be a big summer. A lot to look forward to, even if Old Man Winter is sticking around longer than some would like. I think it's really going to be fun to see everyone. In Red Lodge, I'm Matthew Hidalgo, MTN News. A long away today in the courtroom as Lloyd Barris is finally sentenced for his role in the death of Broadwater County Sheriff's Deputy Mason Moore. Barris' son, Marshall, fatally shot the deputy back in May of 2017 after he attempted to pull the two over on Highway 287 near Three Forks. Marshall was eventually killed in a shootout with officers while Lloyd surrendered and was found guilty in September of last year. Now, after nearly five months, Barris has been sentenced to three life sentences without parole. MTN's Jonathan Amberian was in the courtroom this morning and has details. Friday was an emotional day in the courtroom as Deputy Mason Moore's family and his fellow officers spoke about the impact of his death and Lloyd Barris himself addressed what happened before Judge Kathy Seeley made her ruling. It's been a long five years for patiently waiting for the state to arrive. Prosecutors, along with Moore's family and friends, argued Barris should receive life in prison without the chance for parole for his role in Moore's death and the attempted homicide of other officers. Give them peace by knowing that the evil that took Mason away from them will be locked away from society forever. Give them comfort in knowing that they will never have to return to testify in a parole hearing or court hearing again. 
Broadwater County Attorney Corey Swanson, who is on a leave of absence to serve a National Guard deployment, pointed to an incident years ago when Barris was involved in another standoff with law enforcement. I don't ever want another family, another agency to ask how did this man get out of prison? Because if he does, he will do this again. Mason Moore's brother expressed anger toward Barris. Finally, Moore's wife Jody spoke about the effect his loss has had. The physical, mental, and emotional toll this has taken on us is immeasurable. None of this is okay. There's no excuse, no reason, no explanation, none. She also read a letter that her husband had left for her in case of his death. I love you now and always. Your loving husband. This is the man that you took from us. You robbed me of being able to spend the rest of my life with him. Barris himself addressed the court Friday, expressing regret, but not an explanation for his actions. I'm truly sorry for the loss of, uh, for the uh, Moore family's loss. His attorneys again asked that he be sentenced to the Montana State Hospital instead of prison, saying it's undisputed he suffers from a mental illness and that he needs to be kept in a therapeutic setting. We've heard talk about him being evil. Mr. Barris is seriously mentally ill. And as a result of that, should be, in spite of what he has done, be treated humanely. But Judge Kathy Seeley, who previously ruled Barris was able to understand the criminality of his actions despite his illness, rejected that argument and sentenced him to three life sentences in prison without the possibility of parole. He never, in his rendition of what occurred on that night, has cited fears or delusions. He has cited helping his son and that his son wanted to avoid a charge of attempted murder. Barris will be taken to the Lewis and Clark County Detention Center Friday evening before being transferred to prison on Saturday. In Townsend, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The Carbon County Sheriff's Office and Deputy Dan Wilden now have a new partner to help fight crime. Meet canine Beth as she's officially part of the force after completing a 200-hour narcotics detection and tracking course. Beth is a one-year-old German short-haired pointer and was imported from the Netherlands. She was purchased using a grant received for the Montana Department of Justice in addition to a private party donation. After being shut down last year, a popular Billings attraction is back in business. The amusement park drive-in dealt blows from the COVID-19 pandemic and a worker shortage had to close down and many feared it could be forever. But now they're back and looking forward to a brighter future. Arlena Howder has the story. The amusement park drive-in is one of only two drive-ins still in existence in Montana. Many were worried that the drive-in was set to close after a couple months hiatus, but that's not the case. For many, this scene looks like a flashback from the past, a throwback to another era. When we first built it, it was pretty much old people bringing grandkids out because they were the only ones that knew what a drive-in was. But for Riley Cook, we really like it. It's a lot of fun out here. This is his way of life. He built the drive-in from the ground up and his family has been showing movies on this big screen for the past 17 years. We see the families, hey, I was here when I was young, you know, new young young families now, and that's really fun for us. But that 17-year-long run almost came to an end during the pandemic. We had trouble just getting open because they kept making rules you couldn't have a drive-in. And COVID-19 brought a halt to not only the drive-in, but to Hollywood. We were showing old movies. Hollywood didn't release anything new. So we were showing Greece. Last year, the theater finally opened, but then another setback, worker shortages. We had to close early because of management problems. Riley hopes this new season will mark a new beginning, and he hopes the crowds will return. We're going to go so far this year to get people to come again to try to do free Wednesday nights starting in May. So every Wednesday night will be free. Riley says the drive-in isn't a moneymaker, but it's about the experience, a nod to the past, combining the old with the new. It's a really good feel good place to be. If you have a first or second grader who's begging you to take them to the library, this might be why their published work is currently on display inside the library. 120 students at Poly Drive and Miles Elementary have been working on book reviews for the past five months. The project is the capstone of a five week long project focused on opinion writing. 
Hard copies of the reviews are now accessible to other kids and the general public at the library and also published in a digital book design program called Write Reader. I think it's really fun because it has, it like teaches you how to read them basically and it has a lot of uh, fun, funny books and everything. The review I wrote, because I published it, pretty cool. The illustrated book reviews will be on display at the library through May 9th. Well, still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, Montana Senator John Tester continues to push for full service at the border crossings. We'll tell you more about that. Then in sports, a former Billy Senior star and Gatorade Player of the Year is now looking for a new home after departing the Grizz. We'll have details. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Senator John Tester says continued pandemic restrictions along the border are having an economic impact here in Montana. Now he's once again calling for the U.S. border crossings to resume full service. MTN's Dennis Bragg has more. Tester has been pressing for normal border operations for the past year, citing the decline in the COVID problems that forced both the U.S. and Canada to restrict crossings in 2020. While traffic is resumed with an ever-changing list of requirements, the U.S. border stations keep limiting operating hours, something Tester said is hard to understand. Well, I'm a dirt farmer. I'm not a doctor, but, but, I, but I will tell you that... Uh, for those folks that have been vaccinated, it makes no difference whatsoever. And, and for, for those folks that haven't been, go out and get vaccinated and, uh, and get the border open. Noting Montana had nearly $700 million in Canadian exports in 2018, Tester says the full reopening is critical to agriculture and tourism. All those things have impacts. They have economic impacts. They have impacts being able to businesses to be able to succeed. And I just think that if we really want to get the economy fully back on track, and it's doing quite well right now, uh, but making sure those ports are open are, are really important. Important to individuals, too. Brandy Carvey of Eureka sent us pictures of her family trying to enjoy an Easter Sunday reunion at Lake Cucanusa, roasting hot dogs through the barbed wire fence with Canadian relatives. Tester says reopening would help ease the continued financial and emotional pinch on residents living across the border. I think that's, that's the right thing to do, especially if you want to do some things to try to influence inflation because supply chain is a big cause for the inflation that we're having right now. There have been past fights with Customs and Border Patrol on trimming operations at some of the remote border crossings. Tester says he's not concerned about that, but he did offer a warning. If you want to talk about closing the ports down or reducing hours on a permanent basis, let's have that debate. We've had that before. We've won, and uh, we'll have it again, and we'll win again. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that uh, to close the ports, keep the hours low, because of the pandemic, I think is a mistake. Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Coming up in weather, it could be another rough and snowy weekend, especially in eastern Montana. Ed will have the full details coming up next. The MTN.